The GoPro Hero 9 release is upon us and it might very well be the best GoPro we've ever seen, but in my opinion this release is also very very disappointing. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to my channel, my name is Phil and if you're anything like me, you've waited for a new GoPro release for about a year since the GoPro Hero 8 came out and they got so much right last year that I had really really high hopes for this year. And you might think about buying that camera. It's very new, it's very tempting. Every time a new GoPro comes out, it's very tempting because it sounds so good, but there are definitely a lot of neutral points as well as some big negatives. So let's get into it. First of all, I wanna quickly talk about the positive things of this year's GoPro release. And since it's a video camera, first thing is the image quality. If you wanna see a couple of samples of the video quality compared to the previous models and the competitors, there's a good video by DC Rainmaker Another YouTuber down there, I'll link it in the box below and he has like a 20 minute video of just clip comparisons. The image quality on the previous models, the GoPro 8 and the 7 was already very very good and nothing changed. I think the image quality this year did not improve much even though we got the 5K. The 5K really doesn't look that much better than last year's 4K. The only advantage that you have is that you can zoom in a little bit more in post-production which gives you a little bit more flexibility but that comes at the cost of bigger file sizes, harder to edit etc. So image quality was always good. It is still very very good but no big improvement there. Second point is the stabilization. It's every year a big topic for GoPro. Oh wow the next hyper smooth level is here. This year we get hyper smooth level 3.0 and it is the best stabilization that we've ever seen in a camera that is not a 360 camera. But to be honest, since the GoPro 7 and the introduction of Hypersmooth, it's absolutely fantastic and good enough. So giving us Hypersmooth 3.0 does really do nothing for me since 2.0 is good enough and even 1.0. Stabilization, absolutely amazing. Do not need to talk further about that. My third point is the front facing screen, similar to the ones we saw in last year's DJI Osmo Action as well. And I think that is actually a very nice thing to have. Especially in vlogging situations and you want to film yourself, it's just easier to frame your picture to see if your head is not chopped off or anything like that. So it's definitely nice to have, but you have to be aware. It's a very, very tiny screen. It's not the best quality. And what I've saw in the samples on the internet from the reviewers is that in higher frame rate and bit rate modes as in 4K, 60, the front facing screen, the frame rate drops a lot and this might very well be an issue of a early firmware and I hope they can fix that with a firmware update in the future, but the screen got very jerky and it's not very pleasant to look at. Although in lower bitrate modes in 1080p it doesn't seem to be a problem. I wonder 2.7k was kind of the sweet spot in the older versions so I would hope that in 2.7k and like 60 frames it would work decently. Because if it's usable in that, that would be a great thing and it's very nice to have that front facing screen. The fourth positive point is like this hyperlapse mode that you can pause in between, go to normal mode, speak in between and then go back into hyperlapse. That's a very nice thing to have. And number five and actually another thing that I'm very glad to see is that there is an exchangeable or even interchangeable lens hood on there. They removed that in the GoPro 8 and it's an action cam. You might drop it, you might scratch it and if it's scratched it's basically ruined, right? But if you can exchange the lens hood you just get it off, get a new one, screw it back on as good as new. And with this new kind of mount for the lens hood there might even be an option for third party developers to come up with some funky or innovative creative lenses for that. We'll have to wait and see about that in the future but it's great to have that back as well. But now let's get into the facts that are not that positive in this year's GoPro and that you really have to consider before you buy this camera. And some of these are pretty neutral but some of them are pretty much on the negative side as well. So first of all the size of the GoPro changed. It's a little bigger, it's a little thicker, it's over a little heavier. That is not per se a bad thing. However, some of your old accessories might not fit anymore. For example, if you have a couple of spare old batteries lying around, they don't fit into the new GoPro anymore. You need new bigger batteries. Same goes with like cases. If you have a diving case or any other case that fit the old GoPros, they will probably not fit anymore. I mean, it's not a huge problem since most of the time you use it without a case, but if you decide to do so, it might not fit the new bigger GoPro Hero 9. The worst thing that will not fit anymore though is last year's super hyped media mod and with that 
I want to go into the biggest downside of this GoPro Hero 9, the audio solution. And that is the biggest problem with GoPros over the last years. There is no good external audio solution out there for the GoPros. And GoPro again decided not to address that issue, but instead give us features like 5K. So the in-body audio, the, the one you get directly from the camera, doesn't seem to have improved that much. However, I didn't see that extensive tests about that. And we probably have to wait a little bit to get more of a hands-on review. But so far, to me, it seems like you get kind of the same audio quality that you had in the GoPro Hero 8. And unfortunately, it still does not come with a 3.5 millimeter microphone jack. And that is a big deal for me and potentially for you, because think about it. If you want to use the GoPro, not just for action sports, but also want to have decent audio and maybe even for vlogging and making travel videos, which it could be absolutely fantastic for. One thing you want is to improve on your audio and it shouldn't be that hard. You just get an external microphone, you plug it into your camera and then you have way better audio. That was the whole idea of the media mod last year, which doesn't fit anymore and the years before with this horrible audio adapter and now we're stuck with using that audio adapter again and let me tell you that thing is like 60 or 70 euros here in Europe and half of the time it just doesn't work at all and that is the major problem with the GoPros and it still is and I'm so frustrated that they didn't address this problem in this year's GoPro 9 release. Two years ago, I started building up a little vlogging rig with the GoPro Hero 7, but then I ran into multiple problems. I don't know if it's the USB port that does the problem or if it's the adapter itself, but sometimes the audio just doesn't record from the external microphone that you plug in and it doesn't matter, I tested multiple microphones. Or even worse, it happened to me a couple of times that there was no audio track at all. So the camera thought there's a microphone plugged in, I'm recording externally, but the signal didn't arrive and you have a muted track that makes footage unusable and I'm telling you if that happened once or twice to you you get very hesitant in using this gear if you just can't fully rely on it and that's a big big downside to the GoPro and it's just so frustrating because if they would just address this problem and fix it the GoPro would be such a good all-rounder camera it would be amazing for vlogging traveling everything I mentioned before and still have all the capabilities for these action sports shots and that to me is the biggest fact that, that I will probably not buy the GoPro Hero 9 right now, but I'm hoping that maybe DJI will release a DJI Osmo Action 2 in the near future and does a better job with the audio solution. Another very wonky thing they did this year and that you have to consider is their pricing structure. They offered this weird GoPro subscription for 50 euros a year here in Europe. It's probably $50 or 60 in the US as well. And if you want to pay just 380 euros for the GoPro instead of 480 without the subscription, you have to get the subscription. But if you cancel your subscription, they will charge you later the price difference that you saved in the first place. I'm not sure at this point if you can cancel cancel it after one year or two years. I think they're just banking on people to forget to cancel their subscription. Anyway, it's just a, a big mess to me and I think that's a little bit of shady marketing strategies and something that I'm not really happy to see. Other small points that are kind of neutral or negative is that the low light performance seem to not have improved at all over last year's GoPro Hero 8. There are a couple of clips of people using it, bike riding in the dark. Again, the DC Rainmaker video. There were even some clips where I thought the Hero 8 might look a little bit better. It looked a little bit brighter, but we have to wait for more low light comparisons. Low light could also slightly improve with firmware updates, but I don't know, so far it doesn't look great. There's also things that there is still no super view mode, that is the very wide angle mode GoPro is known for in 4K 60 frames and of course not in 5K either. I would have really loved to see the super view in 4K 60 because I think every mountain biker, motocross rider, anybody who just wants good quality, some slow-mo functionality with 60 frames but still wants the super wide view is gonna be disappointed in still not seeing that mode in the GoPro Hero 9 in 4K 60 or 5K. 
So to round it all up, I still think it's the best action camera on the market right now. It is the best GoPro that they ever made, but in my opinion, the improvements over last year were just a little bit too small this year. I think the two best things are probably the front facing screen and the interchangeable lens. Everything else is like not really important. And it comes at the cost of the major problems like the audio is still there. It wasn't addressed at all, which is super unfortunate and probably keeps me from buying the camera. But in the end, it's still the best GoPro. I wanna know from you guys, what do you think about the new GoPro release with its new specs, with its old problems? Are you gonna get it? Do you think it's the best thing ever? Let me know in the comments below. And if you like this kind of videos, camera talk, I'll do this pretty regularly. Please give this video a thumbs up and leave a subscription if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.